welcome everyone to our Raw Tour event. This is our second event. The first one we did about um, Liberia, and you can find that on our YouTube channel. Um, and for this Raw Tour event, we will be featuring Nigeria. So my name is Ashley Miki, and I am the Youth, Youth Ambassador Board Member for the Foundation for Climate Restoration. The Foundation for Climate Restoration has a mission of catalyzing action by 2030 to restore our Earth to pre-industrial levels of carbon by 2050. Um, and to give you all some more context, we have a really cool bathtub video about climate action, the three stools of climate action, which is um, adaptation, mitigation, and restoration. So restoration is what the Foundation for Climate Restoration works for, and this video will show you how restoration fits into climate action. Imagine our Earth is in a bathtub. For millions of years, Earth was bathing in a healthy level of CO2. Over the last 200 years, humankind turned on the faucet, pouring additional CO2 into the bathtub. Today, the tub is overflowing, and our planet is drowning in CO2. Mitigation helps to turn down the flow rate of the faucet, and adaptation helps us learn to swim in the tub. Both are critical. Still, no matter how much we turn down that faucet, our planet will still be drowning unless we get some CO2 out of the tub. Climate restoration opens the drain to empty the tub. At the Foundation for Climate Restoration, our mission is to restore CO2 to healthy levels as quickly as possible. Our goal is to get to pre-industrial levels by the year 2050. This is achievable, but we need to hurry. Join us. Great, so hopefully you learned a little bit about climate restoration and the foundation and what our mission is. Um, and now to talk a little bit about our youth program, it's called Youth Leaders for Climate Restoration and we just launched it this year. And today you will be hearing from our youth in cohort two. Um, so, so far our program has reached 19 countries across the world, including countries like Fiji and Liberia, and Nigeria and India and the United States. And today, our youth will talk about Nigeria. Um, so you will hear from Yukange, Priya, Fifty, and Kadia too. They are the youth leaders that will be speaking about climate action in Nigeria and global climate action efforts and a lot of great material here. And so now our youth leader, Yukange, will go ahead and give you all an introduction to our featured country. Yukange. Oh, you can't get, I think you were muted. Oh, perfect. Yeah. Thank you for having me. My name is Ukange Chivibe from Nigeria. I'm going to give you a brief background about Nigeria. Next. Okay. We'll look at the location of Nigeria. Nigeria is located in the west coast of Africa, in the Gulf of Guinea. It is bounded in the west by the Republic of Guinea, in the north by Nigeria, in the east by Chad and Kemala, down to the Atlantic Ocean. Next. Okay, we we'll now look at the population of Nigeria. Nigeria is regarded as the largest populated country in Africa. It has an estimated population of 182 million people as of 2016, according to Nigeria National Population Commission. Nigeria is a multi ethnic country with about 246 ethnic groups. Next. Okay, we will now look at the major river system of Nigeria. Nigeria generally has three major river systems. We have the, the two major river systems. We have the uh, Liba, Niger, and Benue, and then the Lake Chad. Next.
Maka Luka ada the 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 cost amalan yang macam ninja ninja has a very wide coastal line. In short, its coastline span about the Nigeria coastline is the Niger Delta region. The Niger Delta region which covers about like seventy percent largest wetland in the world. Next, next, next. next. Can you hear me? Next yeah, you can. Slide. It looks like you are breaking up just a little bit. Um, we want to be able to hear everything that you are saying. Um, so if it is possible, okay. To let's look at the grammar. The grammar of Nigeria. Nigeria generally is located in the low humid tropical climate. You can't get it looks like we cannot hear you. Um Give us just a moment, everyone. We're going to see if we can get you can get. Audio. It has a high climate throughout the. Give us just two moments. Um, we want you all to be able to hear everything that he has prepared for you all. So, uh, we will get that fixed right now. Okay, so while um, Yukange is fixing his audio and joining us, we are going to go a little bit out of order. Um, so we have another youth member who is going to speak to you. Her name is Priya um, and she's from India. So because of the time zone differences and everything, she couldn't be with us live today, but she prepared her speech for you all and pre-recorded it. Um, so we wanna show that to you all now. And Priya is going to be talking about um, mitigation and adaptation efforts, as well as climate change effects on people, infrastructure, and wildlife. So we're gonna share that video with you um, that she prepared. I am Priya Dominic from India. In this presentation, we will see about the Nigeria's mitigation and adaptation efforts and its climate change situations. Let's see a short video on Nigeria's climate situation. Its effects are surreal, but its existence is undeniable. Mother Nature is fighting back against a species that is destroyed. Climate change is affecting our nation, Nigeria, in a very dramatic and drastic way. But we're not really relating on a broad way the reality of where these effects are coming from. So massive amounts of insecurity has been caused in the northern regions because of climate change. It's also impacting negatively on our food security. Again, a hungry man is an angry man. So people that used to you know, have a very, very good uh, agrarian uh, situation are now finding it a lot harder. And it's also impacting in our middle belt.
Now let's see uh, the mitigation and adaptation efforts in Nigeria. And um, there are some mitigation and uh, adaptation effort program initiated in Nigeria, such as uh, the Energy and Climate Branch. This program helped them save up to 20 percentage of their electric consumption by accelerating the switch to energy efficient lighting, air conditioner, etc. The next is the seed capital assistance facility. It makes finance available during the development phase of project being carried out in developing countries and emerging economies that are aimed at promoting the use of climate friendly technologies, example, renewable energy, energy efficiency. Apart from that, uh, the Switch Africa Green Regional Sector Meeting, which is held on uh, 11th and 12th June 2019 in Accra, Ghana, the meeting uh, provided a platform for dialogue among sustainable consumption and production exports, policies and decision makers, financial institutions, and micro, small, medium sized enterprises about scaling up and replicating green business opportunities in the integrated waste sector. Now let's see the climate situation in the effect of people. The impact of climate change are aggravating condition that are threaten peace and security. UN Security General declared an urgent need for better analysis of a linkage between climate change and conflict from a gender perspective. Understanding the gender dimension of climate related security risk is not only key to provide aggravating vulnerabilities, but also to uncovering the new entry point for advancing gender equality, improving climate resilience and sustaining peace. So let's see the climate situation and its effects on wildlife. Nigeria is a home to a wealth of biodiversity within its several national parks, all of which are ecologically and culturally important, where illegal hunting and human settlements are prohibited if enforced. Despite its wealth of oil, the country faces significant problem with the wealth disparity inadequate power supply, lack of infrastructure, and an inconsistent regulatory environment, such as judicial enforcement and national park legislation. When it comes to environmental disaster, Nigeria faces frequent air pollution and toxic effluent threaten the neighboring communities and their environment. These hazards are also compounded by drought, erosion, land degradation, rainstorm, windstorms, fire, pipeline vandalism, floods, and pest invasion. Now let's see the effect of air pollution and water pollution in Nigeria and its mitigation efforts. Nigeria has the largest number of deaths due to air pollution in Africa. When the country ranks fourth for air pollution across the globe, some of the mitigation efforts are the CCAC funded project has set out to reimagine how we tackle household air pollution, field testing cookstove modules in homes to determine the most suitable solutions for scale up. Here we can see the initiative for scaling clean cooking responsibly, tackling air pollution through a woman centered module in Nigeria. Now let's see uh, water pollution and its effects. Water pollution in Nigeria occurs in both rural and urban areas. The major industries responsible for water pollution in Nigeria includes petroleum, mining, wooden pulp, pharmaceuticals, textiles, plastics, iron and steel, brewing, distillery fermentation, paint and food. Of all these, the petroleum industry presents the greatest threat to water qualities. So from the above presentation, it is clear that the climate change affects Nigeria to a great extent, and there are mitigation and adaptation efforts taking place. Some of the observation is that when we compare the greenhouse emission chart and the food waste report 2021, 
Nigeria waste food in excess. If food waste is reduced, there will be a reduction in air pollution and greenhouse gas emission because of the cooking and agricultural sector are these two major greenhouse emission sectors in Nigeria. Thank you. Okay, so that was Priya. Um, I'm glad she was able to tell you all about um, the mitigation and adaptation efforts and also the effects of climate change in Nigeria. Um, and I think we were able to get Yukange back and connected. So he is going to start his part over just so you all can hear what he was saying from the beginning. Um, Yukange, are you here with us? Can you hear me now? Um, we can hear you. You are breaking up just a little bit, um, but it seems like you're getting your connection back. Um, can you try saying one more thing just to make sure we can hear you? Okay, it seems like Yukange will be trying to rejoin again. Um, we will keep circling back to you. Um, his his Wi-Fi was working pretty perfectly um, just a few minutes ago, so I'm sure we will be able to get that fixed for you all. But until then, we are going to move forward um, because we have our Youth Leader 50, and she will be covering legislation and agreements pertaining to mitigation, adaptation, and restoration. Um, so we will jump to 50. All right, thank you, Ashley. And good evening from Indonesia for everyone here. I'm 50, so today um, my presentation will cover about pledges or agreements that created in the country of Nigeria pertaining to mitigation, adaptation, or restoration efforts. So next, please. The government of Nigeria the adverse impact of climate change in many ways. At the international level, Nigeria is a party to the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change and a signatory to both Kyoto Protocol and more Nigeria subscribes to other key international agreements such as the Sendai Framework for Disaster Risk Reduction and the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, or SDGs, for accelerated the national development itself. At the national level, the country has a plethora of policy instruments on climate change and other aspects of the environment, such as the National Climate Change Policy Response and Strategy, or NCCPRS, the National of the environment and the national, po national population policy. The country has also long green bonds by the federal government of Nigeria, Department of Climate Change, to fund environmental projects that are relevant to climate change management following the signing of the Paris Agreement. The second green bond was launched in June 2019 and here in the table, we can see Nigeria's first sovereign green bond in details, which is there are three projects that happened. The first one is about renewable energy, micro utility for the five communities, which is this is an initiative to provide access to electricity uh, in the 45 unserved communities in the country. 
and the second about energizing education which is this is a elect, uh, rural electrification initiative that uh, seeks to develop clean off grid independent power plant and the last one about a forestation program which is um, this aims to increase forest coverage through the plantation seedling to cover around more than a hundred thousand hectares of land and there are many activities currently being implemented or recently completed in the areas of research planning and implementation in climate change adaptation for Nigeria. A lot of information is now available on the current and future scenarios of climate change in the country and the potential impact of climate change with possible adaptation implications. In addition, many of Nigeria's ministries, departments, and agencies or MDAs have access to an, an understanding of relevant national policy documents that can directly or otherwise drive adaptations program. Several civil society organizations or CSOs and non-governmental organizations or NGOs, as well as member of academia have been or are involved in various ways in climate actions and development initiative that support the national adaptation program process. Despite this, the national adaptation process in the country remains largely uncoordinated and incoherent. As part of the of, as part of the efforts to further develop the national adaptation process itself, the Nigeria submitted a readiness and preparatory proposal to Green Climate Fund in 2007 and was approved in, in December 2019. The proposal seeks to address issues that related to institutional institutional capacity and stakeholder collaboration in the adaptation process. Insufficient analysis and dissemination of climate change information, poor adaptation funding and limited monitoring and reporting protocols are the problem. The implementation of the country's readiness and preparatory support program will contribute significantly to addressing some of these challenges. The readiness proposal will enhance the country's approach to climate change planning, which is this will ultimately strengthen the adaptive capacity itself. I think that's all from me. Thank you. And I'll give it back to Ashley. Awesome. Thank you so much, Fifty, for um, covering legislation related to climate action. Um, so we are again going to go ahead and check in with Ukange um, to see if he was able to regain connection um, so he can do his beautiful introduction about Nigeria and give you all background to it. Um, Ukange, were you able to rejoin us again? Just checking in one more time. Yukange, are you here with us? Are you able to um, give your introduction? Give him a uh, maybe if, yeah, maybe if he's, he can just keep his camera off to help with connection so he, we can hear what he's saying. Um, if he can hear us, then maybe just help with connection, keep your camera off. Yes, that might help. Um, you can get, I hope you heard Brooke. If not, we'll be sending that to you in the chat. Um, last check-in, are you able to give your intro? Okay, no worries. Again, um, we will circle back to you, Kange. Um, and just a quick reminder to the audience, we will be taking questions after our presentation is done. So if you wanna engage more with us, you will have a chance to at the end. Um, but before that, we have our youth leader, Katia too, and she will be covering global and regional agreements and programs pertaining to climate action. Katia too. Good evening from Labrador. 
I'm Kadiadu Esheri, and I'll be talking about Global Agreement of Nigeria Carbon Neutral Solution pertaining to climate change. So give them give the slide, please. Let's start with the first one. So Nigeria is one of the countries that is signatory to the Paris Agreement. So the, the Nigeria NDC and during a climate action summit in 2019, September, the president of Nigeria, President Mohamed Buhari, presented a climate action plan that allows a transformation to low carbon emission. The president also said Nigeria is working towards improving energy efficiency and creating renewable energy sources by 2030 with a goal of removing 179 million tons of carbon emission annually, which will be 1,969 tons in total. And the president also said that Nigeria is working towards planting 25 million trees in Nigeria by the year 2030. The next slide, please. So the implementation of the Nigeria determined, national determined contribution focus on five sectors. The sectors are the agricultural sectors, the industrial sector, the oil and gas sector, the transport sectors, and the power generation sector as well. The next slide, please. But this is a snapshot of the Nigeria determined contribution picture. So they, they focus on, like I said, five sectors. And they ha they, it has to do with the reforestation. It has to do with climate smart agriculture. It has to do with improving energy grade, sustainable transportation, like from car to buses. It also has to do with energy efficiency. And all of it is to be achieved by the year 2030. And the benefit for the implementation of the Nigeria National Determined Contribution is the political support, they have public support, and they also have donor funding. Next slide, please. So these are some of the, the renewable energy effort of Nigeria. You can go to the next slide. So as you can see, it say the Nigeria's economic recovery, recovery plan. And the renewable energy effort of Nigeria is being sponsored by the European Union. The next slide, please. So, another project pertaining to carbon neutral solution in Nigeria is, the, on, is under the national climate agenda. It focuses on building resilience against erosion, flooding, a poor road construction, water restoration, road rehabilitation, and all of that. The next slide, please, so we can go in detail. So the title of this project is in Nigeria Erosion and Watershed Management Project. That's the title of the project. Let's go to the next slide and see why. So basically, why the why the project focus on watershed management? Watershed is a is the area of land where surface water drains down to a single point. Like after precipitation, after a rainfall, naturally there's a there's a run down of water in a natural drain, or sometimes it can be constructed. And the point that it collects into is either the stream, the lake, ocean, or whatever artificial drainage that is built. Next slide, please. So as you can see in this picture, after prolonged rain due to climate situation, the, 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 the soil can be eroded. Erosion takes place and the soil gets washed away. The watershed eventually turns into a small valley, called, which is called a gully. So that is why the project is focused on watershed management, road rehabilitation, gully restoration. So this is a gully. It happened due to prolonged rainfall. Next slide, please. So this is some of the situation, the climatic situation that Nigeria faced. The water will wash the soil away, flooding will happen, and people lively will, will be affected. So let's go to the next one. So this is also some of the impact of erosion. And this project raised alarm over erosion threat in one of the states. 
So these are all showing why, why, why they are into that project. The next slide, please. So in order to carry out this initiative, the Nigerian government built capacity in key institutions to be able to carry out this project. And this project, the last conference I was here on this project was in December, to, December 2020, December 9. So the, the national government actually built capacity so that workforce will be able to execute the project. Next slide, please. So these are the workforce. And this is another state of Nigeria. This is the workforce being trained. They are, they are carrying on workshop for building capacity so that they can execute the project rightly. The next slide. So the project was divided into three phases from 2013 to 2017. So the first stage that the project covered was known as the first move stage. And it covered seven states as it commenced in 2013. And the states that you commencing were what they, they call the first move state. The next slide. So after the project was implemented, it's the first seven states in 2013. In 2016, the, this project covered additional seven states. This state was known as the second move states. The next slide. So the third phase of the project was drawn by additional seven states in, in the same 2016. That makes it 22 states. So from 2013 to 2016, the project covered 22 states. And like I said, the, the last capacity that was built in this project was in December 2020. So it means that the project is still going because Nigeria has compared to other African countries. The next slide. So that, this new map project is a World Bank assisted project and is, it is funded through the International Development Association or the RDA. And the project is co coordinated by the National Project Coordinator of Nigeria called Salisu Tahiru. Thank you, that's all for me. Now I'll give it back to Ashley. Awesome. Thank you so much, Kadia, too, for covering how um, some global and regional agreements and programs and how they pertain to climate action. Um, again, we are going to circle back to you, Kange. But before that, I have seen that some people are using the Q&A function. That is perfect. We will address all of your questions at the end. I encourage you to keep using that function and keep um, submitting your questions because we will address them at the end. Um, and then again, just to make sure, Yukange, are you with us? Are you, um, were you able to begin connection again so that you can do your introduction? Just checking again, Yukange, were you able to regain connection? Also, if he isn't able to regain connection, I can also just flip through his slides. And even though we won't have the, all the information that he was going to present to you all, maybe just to get a small idea through his pictures of what he was going to say. Yeah, I think actually what we'll have him do is go ahead and record his part and we'll upload that to YouTube along with the um, other segments so you all can see his part either way. Um, so yeah, if not, that's what we'll do um, so that we can make sure that his part is being displayed. Okay, um, so while we see if he is able to regain connection, I realized that you aren't able to see where our youth are presenting from. Um, we have it in our name tags, but it looks like the name tags are not showing from the participants view. Um, so I just wanna quickly um, go through that because I think it's interesting to see where our youth are presenting from. So I'm Ashley Miki again, I am presenting from the United States. Um, Brooke, who is behind the scenes working a lot with the presentation slides is also from the United States. Um, we have Kadia too. And I'll let them introduce um, their, their name again and their, 
their country where they are presenting from. Katia, do you wanna mention that again? I can, thank you. My name is Kadiatu E. Sharif, and I'm from Liberia. Awesome. And Fifty, do you want to go ahead and tell everyone where you are presenting from? Yeah. Hi, everyone. My name is Call Me Fifty. I'm from Indonesia. Awesome. So that just kind of gives you an idea of. Um, where we're presenting from. Oh, and Priya, the person who pre-recorded her part, she is from India. Um, and Yukange is from Nigeria. So we really want you all to hear what he says because he has some great information um, and he can tell and talk about Nigeria from a unique perspective. But regardless, we'll upload that to YouTube if he isn't able to regain connection just right this minute. Um, and while he does regain connection, we will go ahead and start answering some questions. So the first question we have in the chat is how can erosion be avoided? Does anyone want to go ahead and answer that question? I think that Katia too had some, some of her presentation had uh, slides about the agreement with erosion. I can, so hello everyone. So in, in the presentation, I, I talk about the project of Nigeria is into relating to building resilience against erosion. And that project is in the new map the watershed management. So because sometimes after prolonged rains, you will experience erosion because the, the prolonged rains were ready or the floor will already wash the soil away. And if the soil get washed away, it leads to so many things that the water that Nigeria experience most of the time. So eventually you will see the, the drainage, natural drainage turn into a, a small valley. So one of the way to do is construct the way, you know, resilient with a building or constructing or artificial drainage. So that when rain falls, those water can run in that drainage and go into either a, a, a lake or screen or, or ocean and it will not have to wash the natural soil away. And another way to do it is that we should also build resilience community against that, that maybe plant a tree so that when rainfall, it will not have to hit the ground directly and wash away the soil so that we will not suffer from soil infertility. Thank you. If, if that answers your question. Awesome. Go ahead and let us in the chat, um, let us know if that did answer your question or not. Um, also, I think, Brooke, do you want to go ahead and do Q&As? I'll let you moderate that if you want. Sure. So the next question we have, probably for Ashley, is can you tell us more about the youth program? I would love to speak more about the youth program, but I'm looking at our panelists, and I think Yukange has rejoined us. Just want to quickly check in. Yukange, are you, are you joining us here? Okay. I just wanted to make sure just in case um, he's able to give his part. I'm gonna keep checking in on him, you all, um, because he really does have a great part. Oh, wait, he just connected to the audio. Yukange, are you here with us? Yes, I can hear you now. Awesome, okay. Um, you can, if you want to go ahead and, and try to do your introduction to Nigeria. Okay. All right. Thank you for having me. Yeah, feel free to go ahead. But before um, you go ahead, um, if you want to tell everyone again your name and where you are presenting from, and then you can jump right into your presentation. Okay, my name is Ukange Ichibibe. I'm from Nigeria. I'm going to give you a brief background about Nigeria. Next slide.
Next slide. Can you see that the slide is on the map? Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you, you can get. I don't know if you can see the slides, but we are on the slide with the geographical location of Nigeria and Africa. I don't know if you can see that, but that's the slide that we're on right now. Yes, I'm, I'm seeing it now. I can see it now. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you. Yeah, I can see. I can see it very clear. It's all right. I say I'm going to give you a blue background about Nigeria. So let's look about the geographical location of Nigeria now. If you look at this map, Nigeria is located in the west coast of Africa, in the Gulf of Guinea. It is bounded in the west by the Republic of Guinea, in the north by Niger. Oh, it looks like he lost connection there again. Um, no worries though. Again, like we said, um, we will upload his part on YouTube regardless. So you will be able to see his part. Um, we'll go ahead and answer some more questions though while he's um, rejoining us. Brooke, was there another question that you had for us? Yes, uh, so I guess I already said this question, but we didn't get to answer it quite yet. So Ashley, can you tell us more about the youth program? <laughs> yes, so oh, I think Kange has just rejoined us. Um, Yukange, do you want to give it one more shot at your introduction? Okay, well, I, I will talk about the youth program a little bit. So, sorry, I'm hesitating because I'm seeing- uh, uh -huh. Okay, um, yeah, so what we'll do, um, unfortunately, we will have Yukange's part up on YouTube. Um, Actually, that is fortunately. Unfortunately, we can't hear him live today because it seems like there are a few connection issues. So we will just make sure to upload that on YouTube so we can answer all of you all's questions. Um, so Brooke just asked a question about the program. So I will be talking about that. The program is split into three parts. It spans a total of 12 weeks. So that's, that's about like three months. Um, and then over those 12 weeks, the program is split into three parts. So the first part is learning about climate restoration and how to speak about it. That is where our youth, um, they learn about two presentations, one talking about climate action, the foundation, climate restoration, global um, climate action legislation, um, a lot of great information regarding climate action and climate restoration. And they also learn about communication practices to speak about anything they, that they choose just to become better presenters. And they also have a speaking practice workshop. So everything in that first section is learning about climate restoration and covering some speaking practices. The second section of the program is the formal speaking practice. And um, the youth that has presented to you today, they are in the second section. So that is where we have all of our webinars. They have presented to F4C, our local chapters, again, about some of the presentations in the program. And also they have practiced their segments for the world tour with um, F4C, our local chapters. So all of that happens in the second section. Again, just a lot of practice with speaking about the material and climate action. And then the last and Final part of the program is citizenship, leadership, and mentorship. So for a citizenship, usually we have them do community service um, and get some hours in. For mentorship, they have mentees um, in which they will teach their mentees about everything they've learned from the program, from climate restoration to speaking practices. 
Um, so they have that one-on-one -on -one connection with their mentees. And for leadership, they also have a leadership project in which they advocate for the climate in any way they choose. So some of the leadership projects from cohort one um, is we have a, a podcast up on our Spotify, if you all want to lis listen to that. It is called Save the Oceans by our youth leader, Elsie. Um, she has a really great podcast up. And then we will also be uploading some presentations that our youth made about um, just climate action and things like that. So stay tuned to that. And that will be up on our Instagrams and other social media platforms. Um, and while I'm talking about our social media, go ahead and follow the program social medias on all platforms. Um, and I think our usernames is either um, YL4CR or Youth Leaders for Climate Restoration. And while you're doing that, go ahead and follow the foundation's socials as well. Um, so that's a little bit about the program. We also have scholarships coming through the program. So um, after people get their certification, they can either be a senior certified climate restoration advocate or a junior certified climate restoration advocate. And for the senior level, we are awarding to $10,000 scholarships. And for the junior level, we are awarding to $5,000 scholarships. Um, so that will be done at the end of each year. So lots of great opportunities. Um, we are excited to reach that point um, and excited to have more world tours so you can hear from all of our cohorts. Um, sorry, that was a long-winded explanation, but let's, let's get to some more questions. Okay, so we have a couple more coming in and I think I saw um, some of our youth have already elected to answer these questions. So uh, one of them is, is there public support in Nigeria for reducing emissions, restoring ecosystems, et cetera? I'm so sorry, can you read that question one more time? I was going through the chat. Yes. The question is, is there public support in Nigeria for reducing emissions, is restoring ecosystems, et cetera? That's a good question. Um, I think Kadia 2 and 50 spoke a little bit about that. Do you all want to continue? Okay. Go ahead, Kadia 2. Yeah, did you say benefits? public support. So is there public support in Nigeria for reducing emissions and such? Yeah, like the implementation of the NDC I was talking about mentioned that they have public, public support, they have political support in, as well as donor funding. Okay, lovely. And then Another question would be, how does the population density of Nigeria affect its ability to mitigate emissions? Are there efforts in Nigeria to slow population growth? Yeah, I'll read that question again. Um, it says, how does the population density of Nigeria affect its ability to mitigate emissions? Are there efforts in Nigeria to slow population growth? growth? May I answer for a bit? Yeah, go so, ahead. Um, based from my, what I know about the population control in Nigeria, I said there is a policy to encourage and reduce the fertility from the prison level children per to an average of four children per family. I guess that an optimal marriage of a woman and 24 years old for men and advocates that pregnancies be to age uh, 18 until 35 range, two years. So I think, yeah, that's a little bit of information that can help to answer the question. Does anybody want to add to that or not? We can move on to the next question. I think 50 gave the right, gave the right answer. 
Karena I to each. Hmm. Can I add to it? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, for now, there's no any in terms of uh, any policy regulating the population growth of Nigeria and growth of Nigeria. Uh, remember, I told you before that Nigeria has over like 183 population as of 2016. In short, it is projected that by 2015, Nigeria will become the largest populated country in the whole world. Uh, despite that, I think the, the government of Nigeria has shown less concern about the population growth of Nigeria because as, as it stands, as of today, there's no any public policy regulating the population growth of Nigeria. The action of the mission is... Can you hear me? Can you hear me? We can hear you some. I'll try to um, uh, summarize what you said, and then it might also be helpful for you to type your your answer in the chat to everyone, um, so we can make sure that we're getting all of your points, you can gang. Um, but I, I think so far what you were saying was that by 2050, Nigeria is estimated to have the largest population in the world. Um, and as of right now, there isn't as much public support. Um, and I'm not sure the rest of it, because I'm sure you'll type it in the chat. But, um, and I think he also said the, the government isn't as focused on population. So hopefully my summaration, if you can call it that, kind of answered your question. If not, Yukange will be typing a more in-depth answer in the chat. So go ahead and look at that for um, Yukange's answer. Yeah. Okay, can I pass it? Okay. I'm not sure if we heard you correctly, Yukange. Um, but if you can hear us, go ahead and type the answer in the chat as we move to the next question. I'll just read off the next question then. Um, does Nigeria's economic development rely on increasing emissions? Is there a way for them to contribute to climate restoration without limiting their development? No, okay. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'll, okay. read, I'll read that one more time. I said, does Nigeria's economic development rely on increasing em emissions? Is there a way for them to contribute to climate restoration without limiting their development? Yeah, and I think um, we saw 50 unmute herself first. So 50, if you would like to go first, and Kadia too, um, you can add on to her answer. Yeah, um, add it for a little bit. The relationship between the economic growth and environmental pollution is resulting in the carbon dioxide is really um, intercorrelated inter with each other. As we know that uh, we cannot deny that beside the economic and also the transportation sector also um, become a contributor to the uh, carbon emission itself. But empirically, uh, the economic growth and human development index were found to be positively related to the carbon emissions uh, by UNDP research and it implied that greenhouse gas emissions accompanies Nigeria's economic growth and indicates that the project is not pursued in a sustainable manner yeah, that would meet the present needs emission. of the people without compromising the ability of the future generation to meet their needs. Nigeria is one of the leading producer and user of fossil fuels in the world. It is um, instructed to sustainable management as um, the feature of economic itself is relying on the fossil fuel, which is it's also become a, a biggest producer of the carbon emission itself. And that's why um, there are a lot of uh, many efforts that um, the Nigeria government trying to do, trying to work in a more energy sector to reduce the fossil fuels itself. Maybe I'll give it to Kadiata to add more. Thank you.
in my presentation, I mentioned about the president talking about transitioning to a low carbon emission, transitioning the like economy to a low carbon emission. And during the summit, he talked about removing 179 million tons of carbon dioxide from the atmosphere annually. So they are actually working towards a low carbon emission. And also that is why they focus on pl the planting of 25 million trees by the year 2030. So basically the implementation is based on carbon neutral solutions. So if they should come up about restoration, then that would be a good thing for them to, for them, that would be a good recommendation. But really the, the end is of my job, that I was saying you focus on five sectors. I talk about the transport sectors, I talk about the power generation sectors, the, the power generation sectors, I also talk about uh, they're giving 30% to the to carbon emission reduction. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and before we answer some more questions, I will do a quick formal conclusion of the webinar, even though we will stay informally and answer all of your questions. Um, but before we do that, I will say, um, I hope that you all enjoy hearing our presentation today. We have a document where you can get all of the um, resources and links and everything that we use to create the presentation. So I'll send that in the chat now. So that has all of the sources that we use during presentation. Um, there are also several ways that you can stay engaged with the foundation and our youth program. Go ahead and head to the foundation's website at f4cr.org um, and then engage with our multiple initiatives like our solutions exchange, our carbon removal task force and local government campaigns. And we have some other exciting initiatives on there that you can engage with. Um, also, look out for our exciting programming leading up to COP26 as we're preparing for climate restoration to be a, um, a topic during COP26. And then lastly, about the youth program, um, invite anyone that you think would be interested between the ages of 13 and 24 to go ahead and apply. Applications are now open for cohort and they will close on May 8th. So they have um, just about a week left to apply um, and they can have so many opportunities through this program. So if you know anyone that's interested, go ahead and send them that link so they can apply. Um, and then stay tuned each month as we feature a different country. Go ahead and donate if you have the capacity to. There's a lot of um, donation links and opportunities on the foundation's website. Um, that goes into multiple initiatives like our youth program, like our scholarships and funding to help run this program, um, as well as the other initiatives that the foundation is doing. Um, and that is if you have the capacity to. And um, so that was a quick formal, um, yes. And then Erica sent the link to the foundation's website in the chat where if you wanna go ahead and donate. Um, and so, now we can continue with any other questions if you all want to stay with us and talk a little bit more. Yeah, there were a couple questions in the chat about the program again, but you just answered some of them in your conclusion. So I guess another question that um, is part from these program questions is, um, in what ways is the new map project addressing erosion? So that came for me, right? So the watershed management project, somebody asked that question first. Like the watershed management project of Nigeria focus on road rehabilitation, the rehabilitation of roads, because sometimes the road is poorly constructed and then when you have a prolonged rains, you will have the, the road being damaged or after you wash the soil away. So it focus on road rehabilitation, it also focus on the restoration of, of gully. So that area that, that have been washed away, the, the project also build capacity so that the workforce can be able to uh, carry out, to execute the project. So they, they, they focus on the, the management of watershed, the artificial drainage, so probably about constructing or, or artificial drainage instead of a natural drainage. So that when water, when it, when rain falls, that way it can go down the drainage and find a point that it will call, it will coalesce and go into so that we don't have to wash this, the natural soil away. They are also mentioned that another way is to have a vegetation cover. 
Another way is to have a vegetation cover, probably or, or, or for you can have a you can restore a forest coverage or or vegetation so that you can prevent erosion. What they are into is is a means of adapting and also building resilience. The planting of trees and also managing watershed and restoring the water that have been damaged due to climate situation. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much, Kaya, too. You're very knowledgeable about this stuff. Um, and it doesn't look like we have any more questions about the presentation, just um, I think one for Ashley about the program. So if there are no more questions, then maybe we'll wrap up. Yep. I, for that question that was for me in the chat, I went ahead and um, sent a chat team to answer your question. So go ahead and look at that. Um, Yes, are there any last questions, um, comments, concerns, feedback? We have someone that raised their hand. Yes, yeah, so if you want to raise your hand and go ahead and interact with us, feel free to do so. Um, we want to make this as engaging as possible. Um, so it looks like Phil raised his hand. Yeah, someone made a comment that it looks like Nigeria is the main thing you're, you're concentrating on. That's just this month. So do you know what next month's uh, country you're gonna be be um, concentrating on? Yes, so that is a great question. All of the countries that we feature are chosen by our youth in the cohorts. So um, the next country will feature cohort three and they haven't chosen the country yet is what I'm basically trying to say, but it is up to them. So. Um, we will let you all know as soon as we find out and start marketing and advertising for that event as soon as possible. The next one is scheduled for um, June. That's the month after May. So stay tuned for that and we will keep you updated on the month. So they keep rotating, great. Awesome. Um, well, we hope you all enjoyed our presentation today. We had a lot of fun sharing with you climate action in Nigeria and other fun climate restoration facts and climate action facts. Um, we hope you will stay engaged with us, with the program, as well as the foundation. Please don't hesitate to reach out with any other questions you may have. We will get that answered. And we will also upload Yukange's part of the presentation on YouTube. Um, so go ahead and tune in so you can hear what he has to say about Nigeria. Um, thank you all for joining us. We hope you have a great rest of your days or nights wherever you are located. Bye. Hi, thank you all.